Lighting. Lighting is essential to making a good looking game, as it is a core component of a game's environment and art style. Last time we implemented video memory optimizations, which means now we can focus on adding lighting to our Minecraft clone. So let us cast this world into darkness to begin our work on lighting. First we must implement block lights, which are blocks that emit light that reduce over a given distance. Like Minecraft, we will choose a range of light values from 0 to 15. The lighting algorithm first scans through all the blocks in a chunk. If any of them are lights, it adds them to a queue for the propagation phase. If it is on the border of a chunk, we will check the bordering blocks, and if it has a light value, reduce it by 1 for the current block and add it to the lighting queue. In the propagation phase, which uses breadth for search, go through each position in the queue and check all neighboring blocks. If the neighboring block has a value less than the current value minus 1, then set it to the current value minus 1 and add it to the queue. If the neighboring block is solid, then do not update the light value and do not add it to the queue. Repeat this process until the queue is empty. Note that lighting values can be overwritten by neighboring chunks when calculating for the respective lights. To calculate lighting from the sky, we take the topmost chunk and set the topmost air blocks to a sky lighting value of 15 and add it to its own sky lighting queue. Just like before, we take the values of neighboring blocks of adjacent chunks and add it to the queue as well. The propagation phase is exactly the same as before, with one major difference. If the current sky lighting value is 15, then when propagating to the air block below, set the sky lighting value to 15 instead of subtracting 1. We can go one step further and introduce colored block lights by storing a short that contains three lighting values of 0 to 15 and using that for lighting calculations. When propagating, check each individual R, G, and B component rather than a single value, and when setting the value for the current block, get the maximum components between the neighboring value, minus 1, and the current value. The largest problem with lighting is the memory usage, especially with colored lights, but we have a few tricks up our sleeve to optimize it. Remember in the first episode we had huge memory savings by storing blocks in layers, where if a layer has all blocks of the same value, it's only represented by a single value rather than a value for each block. Likewise, we can do the same for both block lights and skylights. In particular, we know that opaque blocks will not need light values, and stop slides from propagating. By applying this, we only store lighting values when we need to, meaning only the topmost layers have sky lighting data, and only layers within reach of block lights have data. One last optimization that can be done is to store sky lights which are values from 0 to 15 in nibbles instead of bytes. By sharing a byte between two positions, cutting the memory usage for sky lights in half. With colored lights, we store a short for each block, but we only need 12 bits out of each 16-bit short. 4 bits are wasted here unfortunately, where most implementations take advantage of this by storing skylight values here. However, the advantage of separating out skylights in our layered memory layout means that we don't need to store full short values where there are no block lights, meaning greater memory savings overall. For the general case, colored lights have a similar computational cost compared to monochrome lights, with the likely worst case having lights with only one component maximized at around 15 blocks away from each other. Having taken care of the memory, colored lights are absolutely worth it due to their creativity and enables. For example, imagine a fairy forest of green glowing in the night, or volcanic orange, or deep red cavern, or a sci-fi laboratory with glowing blue terminals. Having accomplished this, it's now time to look at your comments. Why have you not uploaded in a while? It's difficult to juggle this large project alongside my full-time job, my health issues, and my friends who rely on my other projects. Real life can and will get in the way, and it's important to use whatever free time you can get. Ideally, I'd upload one video a week, but I expect the next one to be quite the challenging one, so expect another delay. On Vulcan. Vulcan is notoriously difficult, and I'm putting it off for later for good reason. Assuming I make the switch at all. But your responses did get me thinking more about draw calls in OpenGL, and how they are actually multiple state switches followed by a draw command. And I think I discovered a way for massive speedup in rendering. If it works out, I'll tell you about it in my next video. On textures. I am using Minecraft's textures for debugging purposes, and strictly speaking, you are watching Minecraft content, despite being a separate program entirely. But once the game has its own identity or I release it in some form, I cannot use the textures or assets related to Minecraft. Expect some programmer art after all the basics are done. Are you an AI? With the advances of AI, I think I'll take this as a compliment. I think the reason a lot of you think I sound like one is because I try to speak clearly and I cut out the unnecessary breaths and pauses. Which, ironically, AI tries hard to mimic, so I guess they might sound more real than I do. 
Lastly, quite a few of you commented on world generation and LODs, and were quite excited for it. I have a few ideas regarding algorithms I might use, but we have a long way to go before touching that again. We need to get the foundations of the game right before adding features. The next video will likely tackle custom block shapes, directional blocks, and block states, which I'm dreading since it will be a massive overhaul of everything I've done so far, but it is absolutely necessary for the game going forward. So keep in mind, the next video I expect to take a bit of time. I suspect using the community tab will be of use here until the next video comes out, although I'm not too familiar with it. Do you guys want me to use it? If so, what should I put on there? Let me know in the comments. In the meantime, stay tuned, take care, and I'll see you next time.